Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to present our work. I have no disclosures. So the endoscope was actually first invented and developed by surgeons as a tool for simple visualization. And in flexible and endoscopy as a field was later on refined and now principally used by gastroenterologists. Uh, but with that being said, uh, there's increasing need for minimally invasive technique to manage a wide range of surgical problems. Flexible endoscopy remains a vital tool for surgeons. However, there's really limited training resources on advanced endoscopic techniques for surgeons. And furthermore, uh, for surgeons that are already in practice, they face a unique set of challenges when it comes to acquisition of new technical skills, uh, making the need for effective and efficient training curriculum apparent. So here today, we'll present a simulation-based modular curriculum using the into the fire approach with hands-on pre and post tests to teach endoscopic stenting. So I wanna elaborate a little more on this into the fire approach. Rather than the traditional method of didactic lecture followed by simulation and post test, the into the fire approach begins with the hands-on portion where the participant is asked to perform the simulated task or procedure prior to any formal instructions. This allows them, uh, they're effectively thrown into the fire. Uh, this is then followed by didactic content, mentored hands-on practice, and eventually post-tests to assess their learning. Now taking a step back, we can see how some of these learning theories actually can be applied to the into the fire approach. Based on the principle of constructivism, both inquiry-based learning and guided discovery learning encourage the learner to actually explore the subject matter prior to giving instru given instructions and really allow them to participate in the discovery of their new knowledge. By having the uh, participants perform the simulated task first, they're able to construct a framework within which their knowledge and skills are later on contextualized, which allowed to uh, more engaged learning. And based on our experience using this approach, we actually found the course instructors actually also benefited in that they're able to assess the learner's skill level at baseline and identify any potential deficiencies which allowed them to uh, create better tailored instructions during the didactic portion of the curriculum. And we previously published and demonstrated the effectiveness of this into the fire approach in uh, implementing simulation curricula in teaching management of operating room fires, as well as teaching procedures like POEM or POP, as well as the use of endoflip to practicing endoscopists. So using the same approach, we implemented three advanced flex flexible endoscopy courses from 2018 to 2019 for practicing surgeons. And these courses are taught by expert surgical endoscopists, some of whom are actually members of the SAGES Flex Endo Committee. These courses had multiple mo uh, modules with various advanced endoscopic techniques, but for my talk, specifically we're talking about the stenting module, which used a non-tissue model as well as ex vivo porcine model to perform simulated task of stenting of esophageal stricture and gastroduodenal outlet obstruction using a self-expanding stent. The assessment were made using a multiple choice knowledge-based written exam, a confidence survey, as well as hands-on assessment using the modified objective structured assessment of technical skills, which is OSATs, and modified global assessment of gastrointestinal endoscopic skills, or gauges. More specifically, in our initial experience with the first two earlier courses, uh, we used the modified OSATs to evaluate technical skills. And the main parts that were modified were handling of scope and accessories, which was from instrument handling, as well as care for tissue, which was modified from respect for tissue. In our most recent course, we actually used the well-validated gauges assessment tool, including and made it specific to endoscopic stenting, including, sorry, can I go back? Including uh, items such as measuring and marking the length of stenosis, stent deployment, and removal. So looking at the results, we had a total of 28 practicing surgeons who participated in the curriculum, and they had varied background and experiences with the mean practice years of six, most of whom are FLS and FES certified. The majority had performed over 100 uh, upper endoscopies, uh, and you can see here most of the participants had <laughs> extensive laparoscopic experiences. 
So looking at the result from the earlier courses using modified OSATs, we found that there is significant improvement in the written test score as well as confidence survey from pre-test to post-test. And more importantly, we saw significant improvement in the hands-on technical skill endoscopic stenting in each single component of the modified OSATs. And in our most recent course using the specific modified gauges for endoscopic stenting, we saw there was significant improvement in the total score for endoscopic stenting, as well as the setup and measuring of length of stenosis and stent removal. We did not see significant improvement in scope navigation, keep clear endoscopic field, or stent deployment. And moving forward, uh, we actually modified this assessment form. So we combined the scope navigation and clear endoscopic field into a single item. We felt that it was important to keep at least one item that represented general and basic endoscopic uh, skills in the final uh, evaluation form. And this uh, item setup and measuring a length of stenosis was expanded into two separate items, which included ex equipment setup and measuring and marking the length of stenosis. And lastly, looking at the Chromebox Alpha for these modules, which is a measure of internal consistency or how closely these items are related to each other, we found that the modified gauges actually perform slightly better on post-test compared to the modified OSATs. So our study is limited by the relatively small number of participants, as well as the single technique used for endoscopic stenting. With, so, with the limited data, we actually used two different assessment forms, which posed another limitation. And lastly, with evaluator bias as a potential limitation, because we had different evaluators for these different courses for the module. So in conclusion, we found that our module, modular simulation curriculum is effective in improving participant knowledge, confidence, and hands-on technical skills in endoscopic stenting, and that our into-the-fire approach to simulation is helpful for practicing providers with varying prior experiences in the acquisition of new technical skills. And lastly, our simulation model and curriculum can be easily adopted by other institutions to create or add to existing flex endo training curriculum for surgical trainees and practicing surgeons. Thank you.